open. Great, thank you, Kristen. Just want to thank Kristen for inviting me on today to put on this presentation, as well as all the members that were able to join us. Again, my name is Tony Idevito. I'm the National Sales Manager for the Storopack Foam Plus program. And underneath that, that is our polyurethane foam program, as well as our padlock program. We're going to be talking about both today, but we're also going to be talking about all of the products that we have to offer. Uh, the URG members, as well as our services, and, and make the case for perfect protective packaging. And as Kristen said, if you have any questions whatsoever during this, please feel free to jump in. I timed this presentation to be about 30, 35 minutes, so I didn't want to take too much of your time, but I wanted to give you a good overview of everything that we have to offer. So I'll go ahead and get started. And essentially, the first thing I wanted to point out is our Storo Pack app. Uh, this is an app that is free of charge. If you go on your phone, your iPad, your computer, you download this. I'm mentioning this because it contains every video of every machine and every product that we have to offer. It offers all the specs on all the products that we have to offer and all the catalogs and literature. So if you ever have a question in regards to, I wonder how that machine really works or how that operates, you can get all that from this app and it's very easy and simple to use or you can actually go on YouTube. And if you're interested in, in one of our Air Plus machines, you can just simply type in YouTube Store Pack Air Plus machine. All of the videos will pop up and you'll be able to access them right from there. So this is a great resource. And when I was a sales rep with Store Pack, I use this on a daily basis, just to show protective, our uh, prospective customers what a system might look like and how it operates. So again, just want to pass that along as a resource for everyone. Now, as we get into the partnership between URG and Storopack, just a couple of points I wanted to make about the industry as a whole. The automotive recycling industry is the 16th largest in the US. And you guys contribute about $32 billion a year to the national GDP, which is incredible. So congratulations on helping drive the economy here in the States. Beyond that, the industry actually employs around 140,000 people with over 9,000 locations across the country. So in essence, who wouldn't want to partner with this industry? You guys have a massive footprint, you do a great deal of business, and you're the 16th largest in the United States, which is all very impressive. As such, StorePak is really uniquely positioned to, to support you as this industry continues to grow with items like product comparison analysis, and I'll talk about that here in a little bit. New and innovative products to fit market trends, i.e. sustainability. So we'll talk a little bit about that today. And a sales and service team that covers all the major markets in the US. So just to cover on the first point, the product comparison analysis. What that is, is when you're considering possibly making a change in how you protect your goods, our sales reps are able to come in and, and not just look at what you're currently using and suggest an alternative. They have the sales tools to come in and actually do a time study, touch study. How many times does your packer have to touch a product to package it? And then finally, what is the cost of your pack? What does it cost to pack that box? Really, truly, it doesn't matter what a, a roll of film or a roll of paper or even a 55 gallon drum of foam plus product costs. It's what the cost inside the box is that really matters. So before you were to make any decisions, we want you to be as educated as, as possible on what this is going to do for your budget. Will you increase your throughput? Can we help you reduce your labor cost? Can we reduce your damage? And quite frankly, if we can't do more than one of those things, many times it's really not worth it for an end user or a customer to make a change. We, we believe we, we've got to make a bigger impact for you and your company for you to really come to us and start doing business with us. So that's something that we promise our customers we want to go the extra step. We talk about sustainability. If that is not something you're hearing about a lot in the industry right now, I can guarantee you, you will be. Utilizing more renewable products, more sustainable products, whether it be your packaging or whatever it might be, we're hearing more and more from the OEM automotive manufacturers how they have two main goals, to use more sustainable products and to be able to reuse products, no matter what they are. And so they have a keen focus on that. We're seeing that throughout the country and, and industries 
um, across the board. It's not just in automotive, it's everywhere. So you can expect to hear more and more about that. So I'm gonna share some of that information with you today. And then our sales and service team will touch on here briefly. And then finally, our mission is very simple. We do wanna offer the members the perfect solution for your application, which means today we walk in your door and we wanna find the absolute perfect solution for what you're doing today. But as your business grows and those things change, we wanna continually be walking back in your door on a regular basis, find out what's new. What's the next challenge you have? Maybe what we've been providing you with six months ago was a great fit then, but maybe today it's not. And we need to make some changes to help you as you grow. So those are things that, that we take a very consultative approach even if we come in and we determine we can't help you, hopefully we've provided you with some information that can help you think about in the future, hey, I really don't need your services today, but maybe down the road I will. So we look at not just trying to sell products, but more consultative. How can we help you grow your business and support you for the long term? Just some facts and figures about Storefax so you know who we are. We are a German-based company, still family-owned. Uh, we have eight, uh, 66 locations throughout 18 countries. That sounds like a massive company, uh, but we only have 2,520 employees total. So we are very lean. Here in the United States, we have 18 locations. Our home office is Cincinnati, Ohio. And then we have 18 locations throughout the U.S. that support our sales reps, along with our customers in, in all major areas and markets. So just something for you to know about StoroPack and the company itself. You may be familiar with some of these individuals. This is my Phone Plus team. Uh, and just to point out these individuals, if you have not heard from them, they are a resource for you. Alex Folsom uh, is based out of the LA area and he covers the West Coast for us. Daniel Hawkins is based out of Dallas, Texas, and he covers that area, Dallas and Oklahoma, Kansas, part of Missouri. Clay Estes is based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and he covers the entire Southeast, including Florida, and now he also travels up the Eastern Seaboard. Ed Comer is our rep based out of Cincinnati, Ohio, and he covers that Kentucky, part of Indiana, Ohio, and part of Michigan. And then Brandon Valentine is based out of Chicago, Illinois, so he covers that Chicago market along with Minnesota, Wisconsin, part of Indiana, and part of Michigan. Now, this is a Phone Plus sales team, but what's exciting for them is they have been tasked with by Storopack to target and focus on the automotive market in all sectors. So they are going to be getting trained very soon in the, the first couple of weeks of March on all of our product lines, not just foam and padlock, but air, paper, and loose fill as well. So as a resource for you, when they come in, they're able to offer you the perfect solution, not just foam or padlock and they won't have to bring in another sales rep to support your needs as well. We're trying to make it as simple uh, for the associations as we possibly can, so these individuals would be able to be a one-stop shop for all of you. Um, and when we consider what is the best or the, the perfect solution for your application. And then tied to that is our service team. A lot more members here than our Phone Plus team, which is what we want. Our goal is that we never want to place a piece of equipment or a system in a market that we do not service. If we're going to put a machine in, then we have to be able to service it and service it effectively. The worst thing we can do is put a machine in the market and then we can't get there to take care of you when it breaks down. That does no good for us. It definitely does no good for you. So this is our service team. I wanted to mention this just so you know that when we put in a piece of equipment, we will service it or we won't put it in. So I just wanted to, to mention that. The last point I'll talk about Storo Pack, and this really does affect you, and it kind of ties into what I was talking about with the cost analysis. When we talk about buying products, or what is the cost to pack a product and to protect it in shipment? Only 25% of that cost is actually the cost of the good. So if we talk about Foam Plus and 55 gallon drums of material, the total cost, that only factors out to be about 25% of your total cost. The other costs are tied to things like logistics, internal and external, meaning this. When our sales rep comes in, he can help you look at your process flow, where your parts are, how your flow moves throughout your warehouse, and then out for shipping. 
if there's any suggestions we can make to afford you less steps in that process, less touches in that process, make it easier, more efficient and effective, we'll do that. Then it really comes down to whether or not you wanna make those changes just to improve your process. Packing, labor and efficiency. As we all know, and this is no different for store pack, our labor is our biggest cost and expense. People tend to cost more than anything else. So if we can help you guys be more effective with your labor cost, get more box and boxes out the door, which means more margin is coming into your door on a daily basis, utilizing the same level of labor or less labor, that is a goal for us. But again, that's a big portion of your cost to pack, protect, and ship your products. Investment and flexibility. What that means is this, if you happen to have a yard where you're currently buying, say, commodity bubble, the large bundles of bubble. And to get a good price, you're buying, say, 20 or 30 bundles at a time. That's great because you're reducing your cost, but you're also taking up a lot of warehouse space with that product. So is there a better way? We'll talk about bubble on demand today to where you can actually make bubble as you need it, and it doesn't take up so much floor space. For instance, one pallet of our bubble film comes on a four by four pallet, that equals two truckloads of commodity bubble. So an item like that would allow you to, to keep your floor space, not spend the money on buying such large volume of standard bubble, and then you gain all that warehouse space back. Disposal and environment, again, we talk about the, the sustainability factor. We'll talk a little bit more about that down the road here today. And then the big one, complaints and returns, and damages fit in there. The cost to ship a product, our goal for all of our customers is this, is that you have single transit shipments. That means once you pack it, once you ship it, it goes and it doesn't come back. The worst thing that can happen is that that product gets damaged in route, you've paid for the freight, you've already paid for the labor to get it out the door, and now you've got to do it all over again. So our goal is that you have single transit shipments, Products do not get damaged in shipment. Once it walks out the door, you don't have to worry about it again, again, and it's on its way. And now you have a very satisfied, happy customer on the other. Now, going into this, the reason for this webinar, and the first thing you'll, you'll pick up on is the picture on the left-hand side of the page. Understand this came from a, a Facebook stream, and I do want to mention that this is not calling anyone's baby ugly by any means whatsoever. In fact, when I saw this picture, here's the first things I thought, and it's the first three bullet points I list here. Recycling. This is the very definition of recycling. It's, it's perfect. It makes perfect sense to me. You're taking a product like an empty water bottle. It's used, and instead of throwing it away or recycling it, let's put it in the box and get another use out of it. It makes perfect sense. It's inexpensive. Everyone's goal is to keep the profit in the order. So if you can utilize or reutilize products to package your goods, you're keeping the, the maximum amount of profit in that order. And that's everyone's goal. And damage wise on this order from the stream I was reading, I don't believe there was any damage on the shipment. But, and as uh, and one of my past mentors once said, it's after everything after the but that matters. Remember your place in the market again. What I mentioned at the start of this presentation. As an industry, you're the 16th largest in the market today. That's a big deal. You have a very big footprint. As you continue to grow, and as this industry continue to, continues to grow, competition also grows, which means raising the level at which you're conducting business. So what is your product, what is your package say about your business? Believe it or not, and for many of you, you may never meet most of the end users who get your products, but they've met you through the box that you ship them. And that may be their only perception of you and your company and how you conduct business. So it's something to consider when you're shipping boxes out the door that that is you, that is your company, that is your image on display for them. And the last point is what does your packaging say about the value you put on that product they just received? It goes a long way to an end user experience. Once they open that box, that is the visual of your company and the value you put on that product in that box. And that does say a lot, and that will tell them a lot. So it's, again, it's just something to consider. 
I mentioned this story at the bottom of the page that I'm just gonna read through. Imagine a company spends millions of dollars to design, create, beta test, and launch a product into the market. They spend years in this process, and finally the day comes to produce their new product and put it into their customers' hands. At the final stage, right before the product leaves their warehouse, they utilize newsprint or newspaper to protect that product and shipment. What message would that send to the market, their customers, or the quality of the product they produced? We don't have to imagine this. This actual, this scenario was brought to my attention when I was a rep with StorePack a couple of years in, and I was asked, I was called by a design engineer to make a sales call on his company during this situation. He explained to me that they had just got done spending over a million dollars, two years, in development, design, redesign, test, uh, testing, beta testing, and finally they're ready to launch a product into the market. And he brought me in to help sell the shipping and receiving department on not using newsprint because it was a fragile item, it was an expensive item, and he understood, look, the shipping and receiving department has a separate budget. They don't have a ton of money to spend. We have a lot more money to spend in R&D but he was still trying to convince them, hey, look, you need to improve your packaging. We can't afford to ship this product out in this, risk the damage, and also what message does it send to our customers? At the end of the day, we were able to provide to them and show them that with automation, with equipment, they could still stay competitive using a higher and protective product good, and it satisfied everybody's bullet points, everybody's needs, everybody's pain points. So we are able to prove that out. So again, just keep this into consideration as we go through this. Believe me, I've been in, in very large big name customers that recycle and reuse a large amount of packaging product. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You just have to consider the other aspects of the industry and what you're trying to gain, what image you're trying to put out into the field. So our packaging divisions. Again, I mentioned that we have Foam Plus. We also have air, paper, and loose fill that we're going to talk about. And we're going to go through each one step by step, but I'm not going to dig in too deep. I don't want to overload you with a lot of information. Just give you a high level view. So starting off, just some visuals of the different solutions of loose fill, air, paper, and foam. And starting with foam, what is, what is my program and what we have been talking to, to the Automotive Recycling Parts Associations about mainly is polyurethane foam. And this is a system that we've put in now to five yards within URG, a number of more within team PRP that we have started with. But this is, a, this is a great, but also somewhat high end protective packaging solution. It is phenomenal on expensive, sensitive, fragile parts. And it does a great job, but it's not the right solution for every application. In many applications, it could be overkill. And so it's not right for everything, but it is a great solution for those parts that simply cannot go out the door and get damaged or very dense, heavy parts that you might find are blowing through the corrugate box. So again, there, there's, that is really up for our sales rep to come in, be honest with you and say, look, I don't think you need that, but I think this would be a better alternative. But this is really what we've been promoting because of those more fragile items and those more expensive items that you all are dealing with today. I also wanted to mention the hand packer system. This is another Foam Plus machine. We haven't promoted it with the associations, mainly because the majority of the parts that you guys shipping out are going out in boxes. And a bag machine is perfect for that. A machine like this is really meant for larger items. So where we see this in automotive might be with bumpers or grills or items like that. But we've also managed to pack those out with a bag packer machine. We place a majority of these systems in the aerospace industry where they're shipping things like wings, propellers, large items that are getting crated. It's a better fit there, but I did, again, just wanted to bring this to your attention and let you know it is available in the case that you would need to utilize a system like this. Then we move on to a product that's called Padlock. And what this is, is loose fill in a bag. So loose fill peanuts. Now we make this product in two different versions. The product on the left, it's a white bag. That's our standard Padlock pack. It is made up of 100% recycled loose fill. 
and the film itself, the bag itself, is recyclable. It has excellent cushioning curves, almost identical to polyurethane foam. So and if you're in the market, you say, you know what, I need polyurethane foam, but not a lot. Just from time to time, padlock pack would be a great item for you. It comes in a bundle, so you get, depending on the size, 90 up to 200 of these small bags into a bundle and just use it as you need it. Now, the product on the right is called our Padlock Renature, and I apologize if that's a little hard to see, but it's a light green bag. And what that is, is that is a 100% compostable packaging solution. So it offers the cushioning and protection you need. However, it is 100% compostable. In fact, if you were to open that bag up, pour the loose fill into a sink, and turn on the water, it would disintegrate right in front of your eyes. The film itself is 100% compostable, meaning you could take that entire pack, put it into your garden, and within two to three months time, it would disappear. As it's, as it's exposed to the elements, rain, snow, whatever it might be, it will slowly disintegrate right there. What it is, is it's starch-based loose fill and film. So we're taking nutrients out of the earth to make it. And then when it composed, it's taking those nutrients and putting it right back into the soil. So essentially, there's nothing, there's nothing better than having a compostable solution. And we're the only company uh, that has a product like this on the market today. So again, if it's something you're interested in, by all means, that's something we can get in your hands, at least for sampling purposes, and see if it might work for you. Now we move on to paper. Paper does a number of different things, whether it's cushioning, void fill, locking and bracing or wrapping. And we're able to deliver these paper solutions through a number of different pieces of equipment. And here we have a total of seven different machines. Each machine has a different purpose. We have a machine on the bottom left that's called our shooter machine that delivers a one ply 30 pound paper crimped shot out through a machine at a very high speed. So if we think about that box, that picture of the box with the empty water bottles I showed earlier, you could fill that space with paper very quickly, very effectively and efficiently without using the water bottles and still use a paper solution. And if you're currently using craft whole paper, that saves your operator from having to crumple it up and shove it in the box. The machine does it for you. Paper, just like metal or steel, the more you bend it, the stronger it gets. So as the machine takes this paper either out of the box or off of the roll, the machine folds it over and crimps it, it's making that pad very strong. And then we just go up the line in regards to grades and heavier grades and what they're meant for. So whether it's the, the machine in the middle, bottom, the Papillon that makes more of a butterfly fly style paper, or the rest of the machines listed here, they're more industrial grade machines that produce a heavy grade paper. So we do anything from a one ply paper all the way up to a heavy grade three ply paper. And one other machine I'll point out on this slide is the one uh, on the top, second from the left, and it has a tabletop. That machine actually offers you that tabletop as a workspace. It's rhino lined, so it's meant to be in industrial um, situations. You can cut on it, you can beat it up, it's meant to hold up to that, and it delivers paper out of the machine from the end of the table. All of these machines are customizable meaning that you can customize in the machine to produce a certain length paper pad every single time you pull it out of the machine. So if you pull a paper pad out of the machine, it will spit another one out and hold it for you until you're ready to take it. Or you can simply step on a foot pedal and it will feed paper until you let, let off and then it will cut it for you. Now with paper, packaging techniques are very important. So our sales reps would be there to show you how to pack different parts in different ways to utilize the least amount of paper to get the greatest effect. The idea of just shoving paper in a box and hoping it works really doesn't work very well. Our goal is to show you the proper techniques so you minimize your cost per box and you do it right every single time. Now we move on to the Air Plus solutions and we have products that do everything from cushion to void fill, locking and bracing to wrapping. And we essentially have three main machines that we offer these products from. The first one on the left is our Air Plus mini machine. And this produces air pillows that are eight inch, 10 inch or 12 inches wide. 
and the length, we have every length on the market imaginable. Now, again, if we refer back to that box with the empty water bottles, if that part does not have any sharp edges that they were shipping, you could utilize air pillows in that box. And typically our, our customers pay about one to two cents per air pillow. And there's a lot of air pillows per roll, anywhere from 9,000 to 15,000 air pillows per, per roll, depending on the size that you're utilizing. So again, why would we fill a box with paper versus air? As I just kind of mentioned, if you have, if you're shipping products with sharp edges, then air would tend to get punctured in shipment. And, and essentially you would be throwing your money away at that point. That's the last thing we want you to do. That's where we would tell you, look, paper may be a better solution here because a lot of products you ship do have sharp edges. We simply don't want to see your products puncture the protective packaging, and now you've lost the protection you just paid for. Now, if you look on the, the right-hand side, that is our mini CHP machine. That produces 12-inch wide film, whether it be small wrap, which is very similar to the 1 8 inch bubble, commodity bubble that, that you find on the market, bubble on demand, large wrap film, or cushion film. And then the machine on the bottom center produces 24 inch wide film. Again, in the same substrates, small wrap, bubble on demand, large wrap, and cushion film. So we have three main machines that produce all of our product lines. And just to give you an idea of what those finished products look like, on this slide, here's your void film with air pillows on the far left. Then you see the bubble film, which is next. Now, what's the difference between our bubble film and what you would buy on the market? The market today, the commodity bubble, it's what a lot of kids love and some of us adults like to play with as well, is that you, you push on one of those capsules and it pops, or you step on it and, and a number of them pop. We actually engineer our engineered films to have transfer channels or chambers in between the cells. So when you press on one capsule, it transfers the air down the line, down that column, and then as you stop pressing, that air comes back. So if you think in regards to your packages that are going out for shipment, as you wrap them, or as you put cushion film inside that box, as that box gets dropped, the air film doesn't pop like a standard commodity bubble would. It simply transfers the air and then it comes back after the compression. That way you don't lose protect protection. So the bubble film is, is bubble film. We're, we're all familiar with it. You can wrap your products with it. The wrap film, we make it in a small, which is like that 1 8 inch, or we make it in a slightly larger version than the bubble. It's meant to wrap larger items and it's meant to conform to larger items a little bit better and it's more of a, in, in a diamond shape. And then lastly, the cushion film. This is a great product uh, I am a very big fan of. And what it is meant to do is lay inside your box. And for any of those of you who are shipping products where you may wrap a product in bubble first, then lay a bunch of bubble inside the box, and then you fold it over and you encapsulate that entire part after you've already wrapped it. Many times what we're able to do and show people is if they're just using or shipping one item in that box, you can simply lay cushion film in like a plus sign going both directions, put the part in, fold over the cushion film, and now you're good to go. And you haven't had to wrap anything. That's a great tool to use to save time, to save product inside the box, and still protect and cushion your product in shipment. So again, it's just another idea. I'm not saying it's right for everyone's application. Just want to get your brains thinking about, hey, I, I wonder how we could utilize that. And again, these engineered films come in 12 inch wide and 24 inch wide formats. We also make these films in two different levels or gauges. We make a one mil, which is our standard mil thickness. It's a standard film. And we also make a 1.5 mil nylon reinforced. Now, what's the difference? The one and a half mil with nylon actually holds air longer, up to nine months. So if you're someone who's going to package a product and store it for shipment later, that product is meant to hold air for months on end. It also takes a beating much more. So in a scenario where, let's say you're located in, in, in the Northeast region, 
and you're only shipping parts within a small territory. Our standard products, bubble, wrap, or cushion, may be perfect for you. The product's not going very far. It's not getting handled a lot. It's not getting dropped a lot. Standard film will probably work well. If you're going to be shipping products throughout the entirety of the United States, you may think about going to a heavier gauge film. It's going to go through more hands. It's going to go through more terminals. UPS, FedEx, however you're shipping that product, USPS is going to handle that much more, going to drop it much more. So you may consider going to the heavier gauge film. Now it does cost a little bit more, but the protection is much higher in a product like that. Now we move on to loose fill. And this is all we're gonna talk about here. Believe it or not, the loose fill product peanuts are still the most cost effective and effective product on the market today to cushion, block and brace, and void fill. There's nothing better for the cost. Now, most people will say, look, I don't like the mess of it. My customers don't like it. And believe me, we've seen that ourselves. In fact, we own about 95% of this market in the United States today. All 18 of our plants produce loose fill on a daily basis. So we've seen the trend go away from loose fill over the last several years. Until about mid-2019, and then through this year, we're seeing a resurgence because of that sustainability message. People who are shipping products, their customers are mandating more sustainable solutions. And again, we make our loose fill in two different items, as I mentioned before with Padlock. One is 100% recycled EPS, and the other is a fully biodegradable loose fill. So either way, it has a, an excellent environmental footprint, and it does a great job. Most people have a closed mindset to loose fill, but well, we've seen some very big name customers now reach out to us and say, you know what, we, we need to rethink this because of the sustainability message that's come out, because it is very cost effective and it does a great job in shipment, we need to give it another look. Now that doesn't mean that they're gonna buy it, but they are showing interest in it. And at least we have the opportunity to, to talk a little bit more about this product. Line. The last point I'm going to mention in regards to this is that unboxing experience once again. Uh, this is a much bigger issue and it's becoming a much bigger issue with e-commerce as, as you're going to market. How your product arrives says a lot. Uh, in fact, when I am home, I cover the entirety of the United States as well as northern Mexico. But when I am home and packages arrive, I always want to take a look at them and see how they look. Even if you go online and you find a great deal on a product, and you're paying half the amount that you should be, when that box arrives to you, I'm suspecting you're very much like me. When you open that box, you don't wanna see cheap. You know you got a great deal on it, right? I feel the same way. But I still want, when I open that box, to feel like I got a great product. And the only way that your first perception of that is when you open it and you see how they packed it. I've seen all kinds of versions. In fact, just recently, I had to order a new motor for our treadmill here at home. Weighed about 35 pounds, it arrived to my house, and the, the company used corrugate inside, they hand cut it, and then they filled it with air pillows for a 35 pound motor. It didn't do the job. In fact, the, the fan on the motor was shattered, it didn't get to my house for one piece, and now the treadmill shut down for another month while they get me a new one. I actually reached out to them and said, look, I've got some suggestions for you in regards to how, the, how to package these items because I just paid $300 for this and it's broke. And the treadmill's still broken and the time I had set aside to do this, to fix this and install it myself, now I've got to find time down the ladder. So I'm not very happy about that because they went on the cheap with their packaging. So when I opened that box, I wasn't real thrilled about what I saw. And then when I took the motor out, I really wasn't happy because it was broken. It did them no good to ship it in that fashion. And then now it does me no good. So we have, we have them now having to backtrack and send me another motor. And now I've got to find more time down the road to, to fix the treadmill when I get time. So again, that end user experience, how that box looks when it gets there, that all says a lot about your product the company, all in total. So just consider that. The environmental message. I'm just going to talk very briefly about this. This is store packs. 
we focus on reducing, reusing, recycling, and renewing everything that we produce. And so there actually is a very good sustainability message to every product that we offer in the market today. With Air Plus, our standard films are another number two film. What that means, we use the same resins to manufacture that film that they do to manufacture a milk carton. So when you receive our standard film or your customers do, they can simply deflate that product, put it in a recycle bin, just like they do with everything else and put it and put it curbside. So it is cur curbside recyclable. So that's a great point. With Foam Plus, I'll be honest with you, polyurethane foam is probably the least environmentally friendly product on the market today, but it's, it has its place because it has to be there due to those items that just have to be protected, those high expense, high fragile items. But what it is good for is source reduction. And that is a big talking point within the sustainability environmental issue. There's no other product on the market today that you can take two 55 gallon drums and produce in liquid and produce enough foam to fill a 48 foot trailer top to bottom and side to side. The source reduction is amazing. You get a lot of product, a lot of finished product for the liquid that you purchase. And that is a goal for a lot of companies. They are trying to reduce the amount of packaging they're using. And foam does fit that mold. With Paper Plus, we use at least 30% recycled content in all of our papers. And this year, we're moving to 100% recycled content. So we've set that goal by the end of this year that all of our paper products will be 100% recycled. Our loose fill, we talked about that along with our padlock. Again, 100% recycled EPS or 100% biodegradable loose fill in a compostable bag. So again, that whole product, that Renature product is 100% compostable. And I'll tell you, I've gotten more phone calls this year about Renature than I've gotten about anything else. And people are very excited about it. I just want to recognize those partners. I had mentioned that we have five URG members who have partnered with us so far on the Phone Plus program. So I just want to recognize them, Topaz, Ace Auto Records, Pebbles Auto Parts, Legal Chop Shop, and OEM Auto Recyclers. Just want to thank you guys for your partnership and for being partners. I believe in references and what I'm amazed by, I'm on some of the forums on Facebook uh, tied to the automotive uh, parts recycling industry and seeing the amount of communication and networking that this industry and that the associations do is amazing. How you guys lean on each other is, is awesome. And I wish more industries would do that. Um, so please reach out to these individuals. If you wanna ask them how the phone program is working, how we've been supporting them, please feel free to do that. Um, I hope, again, we'll be able to get in some more doors. If it's not about foam, it may be about air, paper, loose full or padlock. And even if you don't buy anything, that is perfectly fine. We wanna help you just evaluate what you're doing. And if somewhere down the road it works out, that's great as well. And then lastly, I just wanna leave my contact information. And if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer those when we're done. Again, uh, my email, uh, I would say just the one thing about my email, a lot of people, when they type that in, my last name starts with an I, not an L. So if you type it in, it's tony.iadevito at storepack.com. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. If you don't wanna bring them up now, feel free to email, email me or call me. If you don't get me on the phone, I will return your call within 24 hours, I promise you that. And if you do want a sales rep, if you're interested in having a sales rep come out and just doing an analysis of what you're currently doing today, feel free to reach out to me. Just send me your name, company name, your address and where you are located. I'll be able to get the right rep out to help you out, come visit and take care of whatever your needs might be. But again, don't hesitate to reach out to me, ask me any questions whatsoever, even if it's just brainstorming, I love doing that. And we'll be happy to help in any way we can. 